right, ladies and gentlemen, both and neither, welcome to Open Mic! I'm going to keep it nice and simple today. Uh, there's nothing coming. Is it off again? Yes. It was off. See? Changes everything, doesn't it? Uh, we're going to have a little bit of fun here today. So this is Open Mic. Uh, who here has never performed at a uh, furry open mic before? Raise your hand. Okay, so we have a few people who don't know. That's fine. Here's how this one works. With this size audience, we're going to try to give you guys five minutes. Now, what does five minutes mean? That means at four minutes, one of us will stand up, just to let you know that your time is almost up. At five minutes, if we're getting the feeling that you're wrapping up, we might let you go for those little extra seconds, but we need time for everybody, so at some point, we will have to cut you off. Very sorry about that. That's just to make sure everyone gets to go. Uh, Having five minutes does not mean you need to use all five minutes. If you want to walk up here and tell a knock-knock joke, feel free. Do not feel that you need to be up here for the full five. Come up here, do what you would like to do. When you are done, one or both of us will stand up and give you advice. This will never be malice-full advice. We are always here. We're all having fun. We're just going to give you some very friendly critiques. We're not going to tear apart your set. That's not what we're here for. And also, if you're on the fence, if you're out there right now wondering if you really do want to come up on this stage and try, I will tell you this right now, you do. <laughs> you are about to be in front of the best audience you could ever have. You are in front of the furry fandom. I don't even need to say no heckling because they're furries and they know if they do, they will spontaneously burst into flames because that's how furries work. We're nice to a fault. A deadly flaming fault. So, all we need is a few volunteers. We're not going to let you raise somebody else's hand. You must try to come up here of your own accord. That is very important. And we're going to try to get through as many people as we can. Before we go, just a few reminders on just general comedic nonsense. Number one, uh, the audience we're with, the size of the audience. Let's stay away from shock humor. Shock humor is a very strange level of humor. Shock humor works with a very large audience when you can get that rolling joke going. It also helps to know the personality of the comic. That is very big in shock humor. I'll tell you this right now, if you're going to come up here and go for shock humor, you're probably not going to have a great time. It's a very nuanced form of comedy. I don't recommend it, and the fandom's really not the best place for it. We're not all that interested in shock comedy. Uh, I myself am a storytelling comedian. I love spinning a good tale. If you are going to attempt that, wonderful. Have a great time. Watch your time. Uh, you'd be surprised how fast that five minutes can fly by. But also bear this in mind. No matter how good your story, no matter how outstanding the punchline at the end of your story is, you still must get there. If you come up here and for five minutes build and build and build and then knock us dead, get the entire room laughing with that punchline, it wasn't a good set because that was four minutes and 55 seconds where no one was laughing. I'm not saying the audience needs to be in stitches the entire time. I'm not even saying the audience needs to laugh. But even when they're not laughing, a person will recognize a joke. Punch-up is key for stories. Don't tell us you are in a darkened room. Tell us how dark that room was. It wasn't as black as night. It was as black as my asshole. It doesn't matter. You're just throwing things out there. That didn't get a laugh, but it got a chuckle. It got everyone thinking, and it brings them into my world. You are in this with the audience. Bring them in with you. Keep it going. Keep up the laughs. Keep up the punch-up, and you're going to have so much more fun up here and do so much better. That is probably one of my biggest pieces of advice to any storytelling comedian out there. Boozy, you got any other just generals? I apologize. Boozy is worried about a bunch of kittens in their home right now, so Boozy will be looking at their phone every once in a while because they need to, because they're adorable. They no, okay? actually, that was just because I've heard you get this so many times. Oh, that's fair enough, too. <laughs> that's actually very fair. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm waiting for the funny people to show up. Uh, fair enough! Any advice? Actually, honestly, it's hard to give general advice on it. Just do your best. Don't freeze. Don't stammer. If you get lost or paused, turn it into part of the show. Hey, 
Uh, nobody expects, a, if you raised your hand, with you've never done an open mic before, and I'll just be honest, let me tell you about, if I may, my very first open mic, I showed up at a bar in Louisville, Kentucky. There were a lot of drunk men. It was a strip club. Nobody wanted to see the open mic comedians. So many people did not come back because they got on the stage, told their jokes, completely bombed, shook in the back, walked out. You never saw them again. If it's your first time on stage, nobody expects you to nail it. You keep doing it and you keep working at it. So don't be afraid to get up here because that's how you do it. Yeah. All right. It's like having a baby. You got to try several times before you nail it. <laughs> Damn it, Boozy! <laughs> That's a first person! <laughs> so let's go up. Let's go right here. Yeah, you, you, yes, you, no, you, you, no. come up, hold on. <laughs> come here, boy, come here, come here, come here. <laughs> Who's a funny boy? Who's a funny boy? Give me, give me, give me. <laughs> How would you like to be introduced? What name would you like to use? Uh, Sparky. Ladies and gentlemen, both and neither, give it up for Sparky! Wow, it's a good crowd here. Um, I know despite the fact that I volunteered first, uh, I'm actually shaking in my skin right now. Uh, I'm very terrified, but uh, you know what? Here it goes. Um, recently, I got hired on to Amazon, right, uh, as a delivery driver. And one of the things I got to do is, you know, yeah, I got to go through your training and all that. And it reminded me of something um, that's always fascinated me is corporate art. Like, you, you, you know what I'm talking about, right? Where you go in and you see just like very sterile, very simplistic corporate art. You know, it's, it's very, it was very fun to watch. So like this, this is the short part of the story. Um, we're going through one of the things here and they're telling us about driving, right? And, uh, So they're telling us about driving, right? And they're going through the basic things, right? Like, you know, pay attention to the road, and, you know, don't drive with your dick, uh, don't do your nails. <laughs> you know, very, very basic stuff. But one of the things that caught my eyes about it is, you know, hey, you know, don't drive distracted, don't be on your phone. This includes mental distractions like family and friends. <laughs> and I know Without a shadow of a doubt, the faceless corporate people in that room did not have that intention there. I just found it hilarious. But anyway, moving on, uh, I do my training. Um, I go through, uh, I get a couple routes under my belt, doing pretty well. Um, you don't meet a whole lot of people as an Amazon driver, um, but when you do, oh boy, let me tell you. <laughs> you see you see some cool, uh, neat stuff. Like sometimes, you know, you go up there and, uh, you know, it's a normal person. Like, hi, here's your package. Okay, cool, that's cool. But, you know, sometimes, you know, you walk on, on like, uh, obvious domestic dispute where, you know, just someone's getting thrashed. Like, hi, um, I have a package for Karen. <laughs> Sign here, please. Okay, I'm going to go. I, 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 I actually had, you know, I brought a package to a older gentleman there, and uh, I give it to him. He's like, what is this? Oh, God. I gotta keep my wife off the internet. She orders too much shit. And it's like, okay, I'm not touching that. <laughs> I'm not touching that one at all. But uh, I think the one that has to top it off the most, um, I'm on my delivery route one day, and I go up to the house. You know, just deliver a package, scan it, drop it off. And there was a guy over there, he was mowing his lawn. Didn't really pay much attention to him. And as I'm walking back to my van, you know, I see him. You know, he looks strangely upset, so we make eye contact and he does one of these. And me, like, I honestly, like, I freeze. Like, I don't know what to do. It's like, hey, are, you, are you talking to me? He's like, yeah, yeah come over here. Go, what, who are you? Where are you from? And it was just like, I, 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 like, I, I, I was awestruck. You know, like, he's just fucking laying into me. It's like, you know, are you one of those fucking spectrum people? I had to chase him off my lawn the other day. It's like, I, like, let, let, me, let me paint a picture for you. 
I'm wearing my Amazon uniform. It says Amazon on it. I'm wearing my shorts that are also Amazon brand. I'm standing behind my van. I'm from the fucking Symphony, Cindy Philharmonic. Where, where do you think I'm from? It's like, anyway, it's, uh, you know, after, you know, like, I, you know, the only reason, you know, I didn't hurt this man's feelings on purpose is because I was just so flabbergasted. So I just do one of these. He was like, oh, all right, it's like I'm a fucking prick. It's like, I, oh, man. But yeah, it's, I gotta say though, working for Amazon hasn't bad, been as bad as I say, you know, it's, it's nice living. But uh, anyway, I think, I think that just about does it. Guys, give it up for I loved your rule of three in the middle there, that the middle one, don't drive with your dick. Like, where are you going to go from there? Don't drive with your dick. That was fun, dude. That was really fun. It's, I, I love the storytelling style. Um, and it, like, it was great. How much of that was a real experience for you? Embellish it a little. <laughs> it's this is that's it because the old guy right there that has the bones of something amazing. Oh yeah. But the and, but it's okay to lie to them. They don't know you're lying. You work for Amazon. Dishonesty is your stock and trade. Go for it, man. <laughs> but no, that that is you have the bones of a really good set there. Just embellish it a bit. Punch it up a little. Very well done. Dude. Let's give them another round of applause. A round of applause for one of them. Spectrum. What the fuck? That was really good, man. All right, who is our next victim? We're going to go all the way to the corner over there, my friend. Yep. Oh, God. How should I introduce you this time? Oh, oh I ran out of names a long time ago. <laughs> now I'm present. Him. Him, the nameless. Ladies and gentlemen, both and neither, give it up for him. <laughs> oh my god, all yours, my friend? Yes, prop comedy. It was me all along. <laughs> so, as I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted three years ago, gelt. Gold coins, and, um, gold wrapped foil chocolate coins given away at Hanukkah and gambled over using the dreidel. In our previous lecture, I had thought I had exhausted this topic. But then I found this in the Hanukkah aisle in 2019. And that leads into something that you should never do. A topical joke about an event that occurred two and a half years ago. When one of the squad, I believe it would have been Rashida Tlaib, tweeted out it was all about the Benjamins, referencing Benjamin Netanyahu, Prime Minister of Israel at the time. Boy, isn't this just going somewhere interesting. So the thing is that that was considered extremely anti-Semitic. And then I found this in the Hanukkah aisle. Hundred dollar gelt. All about the Benjamins, isn't it? Not only that, but platinum gelt. That is just heresy culturally. I mean, I know Hanukkah isn't actually that important a holiday out of, you know, the calendar. You know, the Gentiles all know about it because gambling and gold and Jews. But, you know, you still don't do this. And now for a phrase you don't hear every day, I am not going to dox the rabbi who blessed this as kosher for Passover. And yes, it is kosher. It is also sealed. It is theoretically edible, or at least still holy. Um, and you know what else? Uh, funny noises, right? Noises are funny. I don't know why I have this in my pocket, but... Yeah, you just watch someone badly play a slide whistle. That leads into a joke that I don't know why I'm even bothering to do, but while we're on, you know, cultural stereotypes, what does a insert group of person you don't like do? Um, how do they call their dog? Rover! This is based on a real event in which I once managed to do the two-finger whistle. Don't show me how, I don't want to know. And now for half a joke. I once, I once, and I did have this, a um, statue of Sir Topham Hatt. A little figurine of him. I was going to present it to Alkali. 
There was a joke there. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> so, um, welcome to the panel. Does anyone want to buy my book? $15 and, um, if, if it's autographed, $20 and I won't autograph it and keep its resale value. <laughs> there is no final punchline to this. I forgot what it was in the last three years as well. Aww. Okay. I, I, I cut him off, because I know he's about to steal exactly what I'm about to say. There are some acts out there that when we see them, we go, that guy is not telling jokes for you assholes. <laughs> he's telling jokes for other comedians that are around. That was a set for other comedians. That was amazing. Three years ago at Open Mic, he started to go over time. We had to cut him off. He came up here with the same prop bag, emptied it out and said, as I was saying before, I was so rudely cut off and went immediately back into the same set he was doing three years ago. All I'm going to say is this, my friend, uh, and I'm going to be brutal with you because you are unbelievable. That set that you are doing, the only way to do that one flawlessly is to do it flawlessly. You need to get in front of a mirror, you need to practice that one over and over, and when you can do it without a stammer, without a stutter, without anything, the speed that you do that with, the lackluster way you present your jokes, everything is based off of timing, and your timing is so fucking perfect. Dude, practice that one. Nail it, I'm telling you, you have, the sky is the fucking limit. You are fucking hysterical, dude. Oh. <laughs> Alright, let's head over to this side of the room. Who would like it? Oh, Status, Status, you're right in front. Am I, are you introduced to Status this time? No, don't introduce me. Oh, oh I don't know, I, I have one for this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, both and neither, the next comic needs no introduction. <laughs> this panel started, Boozy called me an orphan and these two are my comedy dads. Yeah. Hi mom and dad, if you're watching, you no longer need to claim me as a dependent on your taxes. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, I work at a bank. <laughs> I have dumb stories from working at a bank and I worked there for about six weeks total. The first one involves two of my coworkers who uh, got in a fight when I went back to work for spring break. And the fight involved them uh, debating which local chicken place had the best chicken. Whether it was uh, Tully's, which is a local chain uh, to my area that's very similar to Culver's, uh, or Chick-fil-A. Oh. The fight went on for so long that they decided to stop speaking to each other. It went on for so long that they made a contract to not speak to each other, and the first person to speak to the other person had to buy the other person dinner. Here's the thing. As mentioned, I work at a bank. Both parties signed it, two witnesses signed it, and we had it professionally notarized. Oh my God. <laughs> it hung above my boss's desk for a week until she noticed it and then left it. <laughs> Finally, someone broke. I come in a few weeks later and they tell me, you just witnessed history, my friend. And I said, why? And he goes, I won. <laughs> Fantastic. Glad you could decide on which chicken place is the best. Uh, another story happened literally two days ago. Uh, I was working drive through and this person sends up the check to pay their loan. And I take a look at the check, and I realize that I cannot accept it, as it is dated in the year 2020. So I get on the intercom, and I tell this guy, I was like, Hi, so unfortunately I can't accept this check because uh, it's two years old. 
Um, I do see that you were the one that wrote it though, so you know, if uh, I send this back, if you want to just initial next to the change, I can make that happen. Okay, cool. Send it up through the tube. He sends it back a couple seconds later, and I pull it out. God give me strength. <laughs> Sir, I still can't accept this check. What? What do you mean? Sir, you sent it up as 2021. <laughs> yeah, and? Sir, <laughs> it's 2022. We get this situated. I don't have a good end to my set. Thanks. I don't <laughs> Good end to my set. That's a pretty good end to your set. Again, as always, no matter what you say, you come up here, you're comfortable, you own the stage. I appreciate it. Your tonality, your timing is always great. Very well done. Find an end to your set. Yeah. <laughs> and again, we're going to take one of Boozy. Uh, your, your, your first one, the, the uh, chicken story. That's an embellisher. You have such a great setup going into there. Finish that one off. That's ridiculous. I was waiting for you to tell me that the winner bought their favorite chicken for the other person. You only said they bet for dinner. Oh no, it's in the contract that they had to buy the other person's... Ah, but reality doesn't need to enter into comedy. They're two very different things. Ah. No, truly appreciate that. Always a good time. Give it up for status, everyone. Right here in the middle, Catters, come on up. My friend, how would you like to be introduced? Uh, Damien. Damien? Yep. All right, ladies and gentlemen, both and neither, give it up for Damien! Oh, you can take it off if you're on the stage, yeah. I mean, we're all vaccinated. You, you, this, this kind of needed Vax cards, right? We're all yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. If we're on stage, there's few enough of us this way. Uh, when you were ready. Alrighty, so I have told this joke before. I actually told this at the last Anthro Ohio. Oh, no. You might remember this one as I should have taken the stairs. So this was OhioCon 2015. I had just got out of a panel about 2.30 in the morning. And I am exhausted as hell, and I'm just thinking, okay, I'm about like five. Like, I'm like five or six flight, uh, flights of stairs up, but I'm thinking, oh, wait, it's 2.30 in the morning. I can actually get inside the elevator instead of just trying to, like, you know, like trying to Assassin's Creed my way through a crowd to get to the elevator, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, all right, screw it. I'll just take the elevator. And so, ding, elevator opens up. And right before the doors close, I can hear off in the distance, like kind of a muffled, it almost sounded like, hey, can you hold that? I'm like, all right. And I can see a fursuiter charging towards my elevator. I'm like, all right, so I just let him in. And we're waiting, and the doors are just taking forever to close. And they finally do. Elevator rises up, and I can, I can, you know, you can kind of get that feeling that something is wrong with your elevator because this is moving at a snail's pace. And so finally, you know, we're talking for a second, and he goes, oh, I gotta take this thing off. He pops the head off. And the smell that came off of him, I can only describe as gas station nacho cheese, swamp ass, and years upon years of shame and regret. Any, any, any Pokemon fans out there? Okay, he smelled probably what the Pokemon gloom smells like. And so, the smell hits me. And I'm thinking, do I just hit the floor? Is it stink like heat? Does it rise? You know, like am I safer on the floor? And then, so here I am trapped with easily the smelliest friggin' thing I've ever smelled in my life. And then I look over on the panel and I see the three scariest words since President Donald Trump. <laughs> I look over and I hear, I see, bing! Emergency elevator stop. So now, I am the sequel to Trapped in the Closet. I am trapped in the elevator. <laughs> I have become R. Kelly except with many, many less lawsuits and a lot less urine. 
And so finally, I'm just, I'm, I am on the floor and I am damn near in a fetal position because I'm just rocking back and forth going like, I'm like, can't do it, can't do it, can't do it. I'm going to murder him, this guy. And that's when I killed him, your honor. <laughs> Speed stick, it's not expensive. And so finally, as if by divine intervention, the elevator starts moving again. It just slowly, slowly gets up to my floor. The, the doors start to part, and I'm like, you know what? I'm not. I like, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm just. I'm not doing this. The doors get about this far apart. I get up. I turn sideways, and I just paper Mario out the bitch like. <laughs> I'm like, I'm free, I'm free. No longer have to deal with that smelly asshole anymore. And I'm just like, I, I, I have like a panic because I, I have a thing with smell. And so I am just booking it. I am running so fast, you would have thought that I was alkali in the liquor store closed in five minutes. <laughs> and I get to my hotel room and I just basically just go up and just, this is Sparta! Just kick that shit in. And I am hunched over the toilet. And I'm just basically like exorcist vomiting. Like my roommate comes, you know, the person I was rooming with comes over. She's like, "Are you okay?" And it just it turned into the heart of darkness. I'm just like the horror, the horror. So long story short, yeah, I should have taken the stairs. That is a good set with a beginning, a middle, an end, and a wrap. That that was. Yeah. That was, there's a lot that ramble that one. No. Started at the con, getting in the elevator, stinky fursuiter, elevator trapped, terrifying situation, heart of darkness, should have taken the stairs. Solid. Yeah, that's a couple of, what was your backup on the Pokemon Gloom? What's that? Your backup. Your backup? Well, this guy smelled like Pokemon Gloom smells. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, if, if you'd be like, are there any Pokemon fans out there and everybody been like, no. <laughs> I mean, like, what's it got to be like, uh, fucking liars? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, I didn't have a backup for that one and that's fine. That's fine, because you know the audience when you're, when you're writing the set on it. Like, it, it, do you think yeah, this is kind of a question, like, if you were telling that story at a different one, what would you replace a fursuit with for somebody who didn't know it? Uh, I, uh, when I told it to normies or people don't know, I said, uh, like, I, I said mascot. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. That's part of, that, that's, like, I'm not, because that set's versatile. Yeah. It's versatile. If you change one or two things to relate to the crowd, you can tell that set to almost any audience. And you'll see that a lot where people will tell jokes out there and it's, you're not going to get those jokes outside of the furry pit. If I got on stage at you know, an event that has nothing to do with the fandom, and I'm like, oh, well, daddy, how well? They're gonna be like, who's this fuck nuts and why are we paying him? So having material that's versatile like that, where you can change one detail or two details and relate it to the art, because everybody's been stuck in an elevator with a stinky person. Having a few J is great, so that is a solid set. Who's next? Let's go all the way in the back. And how should I get the loud man to yell your name? Joy. Joy? Yes. <clears throat> oh, ladies and gentlemen, both and neither, give it up for Joy! I don't know how to adjust this thing. Oh. That's fine. That is fine. <laughs> adjust it! All right. Thank you. Hi. Uh, you guys can call me Joy. This is my first suit, Flower. We have a lot in common. Um, I'm not wearing him right now because my friend would have to lead me up here. We're a lot like Wanda. We can't find our vision. Like, at all. Like, she had, he had to lead me, like, through the con earlier, and I was like, don't look at the lights, don't look at the dark, you can't see, you can't see. Even with glasses on, I miss everything that's right in front of my face. We, we went to a horse barn recently, 
and I was looking for the girth. It goes under the horse's belly to keep the saddle from sliding off. And I'm like, where is it? Where is it? He's like, Joy, look down. It's right there. It's just right there. So yeah, we're both pretty blind, but we have a lot of other things in common. Like we're cute on the outside, kind of a hot mess on the inside. <laughs> you probably can't see, but there's lots of like just crazy stuff on the inside of him. I kind of threw him together a little bit, but that's all good. But like a lot like me, I have, I'm cute on the outside, but I got anxiety. It, it's a lot of fun, way fun. It's like, I'd be driving down the highway, I'd be blasting my EDM. Does anyone here listen to Virtual Riot? Yes, in the back. You just go, head banging, head banging, head banging, and it keeps my mind off the fact like, oh my god, I'm gonna die. Oh my god, oh my god, there's a semi. Just, just grip that steering wheel, go, hmm. Listen to Virtual Riot, going, wow, wow. <laughs> and just freaking like bass, drum and bass, just like turn that shit up. I don't want to hear anything. I don't want to hear a semi next to me. I don't want to hear the construction. It's just like, oh my gosh, just grab the steering wheel, grab the steering wheel, grab the steering wheel. Absolutely terrifying. But, uh, but other than, you know, not seeing things in front of me and having anxiety and all that great stuff, I miss a lot of other things, like sexual innuendos. I never get those. Like, I was in middle school, I was in high school before I knew the song Shut Up and Drive was about sex. Someone told me, I'm like, shut up and drive what in bed? You're in bed, you're not going anywhere. I was so confused. <laughs> like, people are like, car sex. I'm like, why would you have sex in a car? That sounds so uncomfortable. It's like, where are you gonna do it? It's like, the chairs are just sitting up. It's like, you just sit in the chair, like, there's no space down there. Like a grown woman, like, no, who can get down there? I couldn't, and I'm small. It's like, shut up and drive, shut up and drive what? You gonna use his dick like a shift? What's that gonna do? <laughs> Does he have gears? Did he like, if he's like not putting out fast enough, you like shift it and he goes a little faster and it's like, whoa, slow down. Like, is that how it works? I don't think that's how it works. That's a little weird. Well, that's all I had. That's all I could come up with. So thank you. Uh, first off, your punch up, because I think I'm going to die. <laughs> that was outstanding. <laughs> Uh, you came up here, you owned it. Any, any anxiety that you have did not show up up here. That was outstanding. You seem to be a very energetic person. My two pieces of advice, move around a little bit more. The stage is yours because you came up here and you owned a radius around you. Own this whole bitch. This is your world. You did awesome. And lean into your innocence. I don't want to hear, oh, uh, shut up and drive. How are you going to do that? Immediately go to... I don't know what I'm going to do at 60 miles an hour, but it doesn't involve a blowjob. Like, just lean into your innocence because that was adorable, that was wonderful, that was fun. Thank you got anything? That was so cool. That was so cool. Uh, Bill, the, the nervous energy that you bring up here, it, A, it helps your own. Oh, yeah. Containing it in such a small space. Oh, don't do that. So I'm with him on that, Bill. Second, that specific bit. The shut up and drive part of it. Holy shit. I was waiting for you to say something like, what if I need to pop his clutch? I build on that because that, that, the, like the, the anxiety and driving, I may die, I don't understand a lot of things, shut up and drive, and then you can get into the meat of a good type five yeah. right after that. That was great. You had that down. And a preview for you, just because it was the first thing I thought when you were saying you've got the distractions, you've got the music, you don't want to hear. You can't hear the cop if they're pulling you over either. <laughs> so just bear that in mind. Give it up for joy. That was awesome. That was awesome, my friend. It is time. It is time. Same name? Yes, sir. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, both and neither, give it up for Kaya! Thank you, my good man. I'm back! <laughs> I did my first ever set, ever, at this con in 2019. I remember the stairs. <laughs> I experienced that firsthand. It's great. So, going back to 2019, I'm going to briefly retell one of my favorite stories I have ever had the privilege of doing it, but a lot less nervous! I went to MFF 2018 for the first time. 
I was with one of my friends who is currently a volunteer at this convention. He is around. He's a big blue wolf by the name of Foresta. If you see him, please tell him I say hi, even though he's in my room. Just say hi for him. <laughs> so, we woke up one morning. He wanted to try out for doing some dance and stuff. We wanted to get energized. Went down and got breakfast at Starbucks. Who here has a room group chat on Telegram? All right. So imagine at 10 in the morning, you get, can I host a room party from one of your members? 10.30 in the morning. We haven't even gotten started yet. We go, what kind? The other roommate who owned the room said, sure. <laughs> You'll realize quick this was a mistake. We said, what kind? He replied with, it is a paw appreciation party. It's not that lewd. Oh no, it was. We found out firsthand. After we learned that he did get approval for it, me and him chugged just down whatever our breakfast was and sprinted to the elevators. It's still elevator con at 10.30 in the morning. We're on like the 23rd floor. Stairs are not an option. We get upstairs, open the room, and I'm immediately traumatized. There is a man, this is the, the first thing I see. There is a man on the floor, like this. With feet in his mouth. I am instantly confused. There is a man in the corner. What do you think he's doing? I don't need to do the action. It looks wrong holding a microphone. What he did after when I said, how you doing, was... <laughs> Sorry to interrupt the good time. It's not even lunch. So now we're like, well, we were going to go suiting, but now I'm confused. <laughs> so, we are trying to get suited. Foresta is in the corner, putting on Under Armour, and guy in corner is eyeing him up and down like fresh ribs. Oh. Like drooling at the mouth. Hey, you gonna get real dressed and naked for me, you know what I'm like? <laughs> <laughs> Just looking him up and down, salivating, like jowls everywhere, and he goes, Russell looks in. Honey, never. <laughs> no. As much as that traumatized me, that was a fantastic convention. I got to uh, witness some of you guys' performances there for the first time. It made me do this. Um, that was one of my most favorite things I have ever done. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to do open mic comedy in a long time because I got into this little thing called dance. I love dancing. It is a ton of fun. I have had the privilege of being able to share the studio and share the stage with so many amazing, talented people. And, uh, A.V., I get to mess with you for this convention. Um, what happened? <laughs> get up! <laughs> you hide from nothing! <laughs> I'm wearing this. You think we're both? The yeah. So, you know as well as anybody, whenever you are getting a panel set up that you want to hear the audio, everything, any visuals that you have as an aid, you want them to be squared up, ready for the panel, or performance, whatever it may be, before it starts, I'm backstage, we're rehearsing with everybody, and they start playing the Wide Putin meme song, <laughs> and stretching everything on two projector screens, like that, but on both sides of the stage. I thought it'd be funny to walk out of backstage doing this. <laughs> AV saw me and went, that one. They zoomed in on me, in suit, without the head, stretched the ever-loving hell out of me, and the meme of Wide Kyre was born. I walked around the entire empty stage, and all I hear is one of my dance coaches in the back goes, Oh my god, Kyre. Three seconds of pure silence, and then crying laughter. <laughs> like, I can't get away from this even if I wanted to, so I'm stuck with you lot, and I'm totally fine with it. So if you guys go to any of the dances and anything, I hope to see you guys there. It's been fantastic to share the stage with you guys again. 
Please give it your all and give a hand for your massive, amazing host. <laughs> As always, you do a fantastic job up on the stage. Love the coat that is very flashy up here. Good choice of hat, by the way, I approve. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No, solid dude, you always get up here. You have a wonderful story, you have good presentation. The only weird one I'd give you is, uh, yeah, we have this up here, and I also utilize, in, uh, for uh, Three-Headed Monster, I'll utilize a, uh, a table. I am dressed uh, very fake formally. It is the character I am portraying right now. It's a black coat. I don't care about the mesh and back. That doesn't matter. It's not seen. I am playing something dapper. You're not. You, again, like Joy, need to own this stage. Don't use this table. If you're wearing that red band on the hat, flashy coat, be flashy. You are larger than life. Be larger than life on this stage. But other than that, dude, I loved it. That was fun. All right, I have a criticism. <laughs> If it's you, about feet, I'm gonna cry. No, you cannot come on this stage looking like the bastard love child of Andrew Lloyd Webber's Wet Dreams and Elton John. <laughs> Get into the last one minute of a five minute set and say, I haven't done comedy a lot because I've taken up dance, A.V., and then not fucking dance. <laughs> Check off's cock block, you son of a bitch. Hey, A.V., do you want the track? I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. Unfortunately, they are messing with you because we have enough people going up here. But again, give a round of applause for Kai. Kai, are you in the dance competition? I'm hoping to be. All right, if you want to see Kyra dance, please go to the dance competition. Wonderful, well done. All right, we're going to go all the way to the back of the room with the hockey jersey, I believe it is. Yeah, the Penguins jersey. Yes, come on up, my friend. All right, how can I introduce you? My name is Jackson. Jackson. Ladies and gentlemen, both and neither, give it up for Jackson! Nice to meet everybody. It's good to see everyone here. My name is Jackson. This is my first furry convention ever, so I'm so happy to be around all of you fine folks. And I have, so I was, we were driving down here, uh, I live up in Ann Arbor right now, um, driving down to Columbus, and I see the dreaded THE Ohio State University. And I said, man, I'm in the wrong town. Because I graduated from Penn State, just this past year, so I was really happy. Got that bachelor's in mechanical engineering. All the student debt in the world, but hopefully Biden takes care of that. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I figured we would go around and, like I, I know you're saying, you gotta embellish reality a little bit. I don't need to embellish reality. Penn State was a wild time, and I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I gotta tell you this one story. So I was in an all, Penn State's all men's acapella group, the Statesman, find us on Spotify, shameless plug. Um, we, had intramurals because we played we played in the spring you could do intramurals in the in the spring as a student and i thought okay flag football let's make this happen so my friends and i were all pasty pasty white irish guys in our little sweaters we get up go play some go play some flag football we get to the final game of the season we do we're doing really well we're crushing it love life little do i know final game of the season i see sean clifford and kj hamler if you do not know who those are, Sean Clifford, head quarterback at Penn State. KJ Hamler now is the current receiver for the Denver Broncos. Guess who has to go up against him? I am not a football, I like, I played football throughout high school. I was very much a lineman, no way a receiver. So I'm like, okay, I'm going up against this actual D1, now NFL athlete, athlete making more money than I'll ever make in the world. I'm just like, they hike the ball, pass block, pass block, he sails. He runs away. Touchdown pass every time. Statesman lost that game 85 to zero before we had to call it out on mercy rule. And that game, normally, they give us an hour and a half to play. We get the whole, we get the whole intramural field. That game lasted 25 minutes. Because you put Sean Clifford and KJ Hamler in a room against not D1 football players, you get one result. And that is an unapologetic loss. Going, uh, Going for, uh, for, so that was junior year of college. Senior year of college, COVID happened. Sad. 
But I came back for the Statesman Alumni Concert, which was super fun. And my friends, they live in an apartment right on Beaver Avenue, right on the main drag at Penn State. And I walk in. This actually, this is funny because this is before I became a furry. I walk in and see a man fully decked out in, as an inflatable gorilla. Absolute zero context. I walk in. I'm like, okay, I haven't seen these guys in a while. This is going to be time. Inflatable gorilla. Hello there. And he just runs up to me. And he just gives me this massive hug. And I'm like, oh, I'm like half scared out of my mind. But this is a great time. And so what we did, if you, you can actually see him on Instagram, Buzz the Gorilla. Um, but we go around with Buzz and my friends. We go around. And luckily, if you go with Buzz, your, the handler has a hockey jersey. Thankfully, everywhere I go, I have my Penn's jersey. So we go around. And I am, I have to be the policeman for the gorilla. I have to manage pictures, having never met this man in my life. I have to manage pictures, I have to ask, like, people ask me for pictures all the time, and I just have to be like, go ahead if you can catch him. Because he runs. Buzz the gorilla sprints. And uh, my favorite, I had to be told this secondhand because as an alumni, I came back, got totally shit faced. I'll, I'll own up to that. Own up to that. I was told secondhand, not having remembered one bit, downtown College Avenue, Buzz sprints. He goes. But lo behind him was a very fat man in, in a Penn's jersey going, Buzz, 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 Buzz. We gotta go. And I don't remember this at all. I was told this by three separate people who all have their own different story and placed me at three different bars trying to police Buzz. And luckily, my friend Derek had videos of every single night because while I was policing the gorilla, he was policing me. <laughs> so by the end of the night, by the end of this wonderful weekend, we did this whole preppy concert. I got my ass kicked by KJ Hamler. And I now had to police this gorilla. I was told in one fell video, we went from bar to bar to bar. This gorilla was hopped up on Hatterall, sprinting through the campus. And I was chasing after him in my Penn's jersey and jeans, winded as all hell, enjoying myself. So thank you so much. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Hey, 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 we are. Penn State. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, number one, Buzz the Gorilla, that would have gotten a huge pop in State College. These people have no fucking clue who Buzz the Gorilla is. I found him on Instagram. Yeah. I, I, it's a good bit. Because the image of you in a hockey jersey chasing an inflatable gorilla down College Ave to somebody. I, I practice in, in Berks. I got friends who practice in State College. I'm there all the time. That image in my head is hilarious. To so these people, they're like, what the fuck is Deaver? What the fuck's College? They're like, they don't know there's a bar. You gotta spend some time building the world on that one so that they can see the inflatable gorilla on Adderall running from bar to bar in a college town on a Friday night as a fully grown adult a cappella singing male in a hockey jersey <laughs> is chasing him going, Buzz! Buzz! Have you seen my monkey? <laughs> you, you've gotta build that world just a bit. Because there's the bones of something great in that gorilla story, but the gorilla story, and, and I did it too, Alkali's done it too, yeah. every comedian does it because we're talking about what we know, it's hilarious to us because we know the lore in the area. You gotta build the world because how many people in here have ever been to State College, Pennsylvania? These are the people who know who, what College Am <laughs> is and may know where Bud, who Buzz the Gorilla is. Spend a, just 30 seconds building that world with the gorilla in State College. Gotcha. And, and you got a great act. Sounds good. Appreciate it. So good. All right, it looks like we got time for two more, so here's what I'm going to ask. If you're putting your hand up, I would like this to be, uh, I'm not going to say a practice set, but something you kind of knew you were coming here to do. If this was a last minute thing, we're going to get you next time, but just people who have came here with an idea and want to do this, put your hands up. 
Right here in front, what's your name? I'm Jordan. Jordan. Ladies and gentlemen, both and neither, give it up for Jordan! All right, it's been a while since I've been on the stage. Whew. I want to talk about my time where I do dog pageants. If you don't know what a dog pageant is, think of toddlers and tiaras but with dogs and more crazy shenanigans. <laughs> so basically, I drove to Pennsylvania for this one. It's my first one going to a dog pageant in Pennsylvania. Um, drove all the way up there. Uh, I was literally running, catching the time. The woman gave me my number, I stood in line, and the first thing I got when I got there was, oh honey, maybe you should win, like lead with your best. Since you're number one, I should be number one. And I looked at this girl, I'm like, who the heck are you? Realizing this woman who is literally dressed head to toe, big blonde, curled up hair, long lavender, like sequins gown, and she has this dog who is a rat terrier, Chinese crescent mix, also wearing the same purple sequins gown and a wig, sorry, a gold blonde wig, oh. matching with it side by side. And she's like, honey, we should leave with her first. I'm like, and that's why I'm going to go, because I'm the best, I'm the first. <laughs> So I got my cute little dog, she's wearing her big giant blue Victorian dress. We go up there, we do our thing. And other than the poor guy who's being the announcer going, uh, here's Arna. Aria! Arna. Aria! Her name's Aria! Yeah, just come on up here. So, <laughs> except for when it got to his dog. Now when he introduced his dog, his wife presented, and he goes, All right, ladies and gentlemen, here's the number one, the one and only, Biggie Smalls! And of course, everyone cheers, and he has this big giant French bull mastiff thing that comes on, who has literally a gold chain, and a tank top, and some sunglasses, and granted, he was adorable. So when we got called, I was standing in line with the crazy lady, the mastiff, and some other dogs around me. Um, they called me as number third, so I went third place. I get up there, and right before I'm walking on stage, the woman goes, oh, good for you, hun, right where you deserve. And I'm like, bitch, did she just say that? Are we going to throw hands? at the dog pageant. So I get up there, I'm waiting. And then of course they call her name as number two. She comes up there, she's already looking pissed. And I'm like, oh, this is gonna be great. So she comes up there and I go, oh, look, hon, second place, right where you belong. You look good. <laughs> so she's standing there looking really annoyed. And then they call number one, which was none other, Biggie Smalls. And you just see the look of anger and terror and just hatred build in her eyes. And she goes, wait a second, wait a second. B should not be number one. This was supposed to be a dog pageant, not a costume contest. And I'm like, oh, it's happening. It's happening. A Karen moment right here at the dog pageant. I've only dreamed of these events. I've only dreamed of watching the YouTube videos. And I'm like watching her. She's ripping the flowers out the woman's arm. She's throwing a pit and she's demanding, recount, recount, recount. And I'm just standing there going, where is it? Where is it? I left my phone in the car, <laughs> and I could not record the beautiful moment that unfolded within me. And of course, they recounted because she threw a huge fit. She was second place. <laughs> well, that is as she belonged. And I was still third place, and she was still first. They did talk about bumping me up, so she threw a huge fit, but they didn't. <laughs> I was like, I don't care. I'll just have what I want. And she's just literally throwing a huge fit. She literally goes to events. That's all she does, she's just rich and popular and just goes to events, she matches her dog up, this ugly, poor rat terrier thing wearing a blonde wig, and is lunging at people as it walks by, and I, I just can't imagine it, so, but it happens. That's pretty much what I have. Loved it. Again, you came up here and you owned the stage, you were very animated, well, well, making fun of our Karen. Uh, the first thing I'm going to say is, you didn't make third place. That story is a revenge story. If that ends with you making second place, I think this entire room would have exploded. Right. You need to win second place in that story. <laughs> that is so wonderful. You have a revenge story, and revenge stories are very fun because everyone's on your side. The other one is, right away when you said that it was happening, you started off very demure, like, oh, it was happening, and then you got very excited. No. The moment they're about to Karen, you need to show them how excited you were. Because if I was about to witness a real-life Karen moment, I would be delighted. It so, was beautiful. Oh, I'm sure it was. That was wonderful. That was super fun. Give it up. That was outstanding. Yeah, that's
sorry, you have a stopwatch. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, cool. got six minutes. All right, we got time for one more uh, right here. Yes, come on up. How may I introduce you, my friend? Alexis. Alexis? Ladies and gentlemen, both and neither, give it up for Alexis! Thank you very much. So I know everyone here, everyone here has friends. No, debate. Oh, come on. You know you have friends. Everyone's got like four kinds of friends. You've, I've noticed this. I've so, seen so many people with like four kinds of friends. You got your friends with the best luck. The ones that nothing ever seems to go wrong. You got your friends that are there for you, the super comforting ones. You got your friends that are kind of like, uh, do I really like you? Yeah, I've been around you forever. I like you. And then you've got your friends like me that have the world's most terrible luck. My luck is absolutely so trash. I get stopped by almost every red light on the same street in about four minutes. I cannot go anywhere or do anything to where I can get there effectively. It's like I pull up, it goes yellow. My friends have commented on this like, dude, why? What is just up with you, your cars? Is it because your car is red that the red, le red lights like you? <laughs> I've got no clue. Maybe it's because my hair's red. Maybe it's because I'm growing my lobster shell. I, I don't know. <laughs> but I cannot, for the love of anything, get a victory on, on a competition. I'm lucky to get the top 10. <laughs> I go and I do a lot of different things, and I try my best. Do everything I can. Never really, you know, pans out the way I planned for it. Turns out amazing in the end. Friends get involved, they're all confused, like, dude, you had it going, you lost it, you picked it back up, you threw it over your shoulder, and then let it flop on the ground like a fish and still won. What's going wrong with you? I look at them, I don't, know, I don't, I don't have any, any clue why my life is this way. My best friend, he's one of those ones that, he's crazy. <laughs> he's that friend that you take and go out with because you know something's going to happen when you're with him that's going to be a blast. I can't go anywhere with, with him and not have a blast. Maybe it's super embarrassing. I don't, I, it's so many things. <laughs> One time I was going karaoke. I, I go out to the south side, I go to the, the bars, and I take him sing. Something I love to do, something, you know, whatever, mediocre at. My friend gets up there, he decides to take and change the whole tune of the bar. We're a, a, a pretty country western. They sing Hank, they sing, sing Willie, they sing George Jones. Friend comes over and he starts singing Three Days Grace. <laughs> Just out of the blue, he goes up there, Teenagers scare the living shit out of me. I'm like, dude, that's awesome. First of all, I didn't know you knew that song. Second of all, I didn't know you had that voice. <laughs> Everyone there just instantly, tune changed. Best night of my life that night when I went out for karaoke. Best night I had in weeks. Go on my own. Everyone's same, same. Singing country, singing rock, a little bit, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. But he's witnessed me in so many unpredictable, crazy predicaments. Like, I have the trashiest luck with cars. And I was a mechanic for three years. I put $5,000 in my somewhat new car because my last car decided to explode. <laughs> Funny story on that. This new car, actually older than my old car, a lot better, a lot cleaner, a lot neater, a lot safer. Within a year, I get hit by someone. I'm like, dude, this sucks, car's got 80,000 miles, it's a 1994. It, when I bought it, it was pristine, other than like one little chip of paint. And now I gotta put $1,200 into it. And I'm like, bro, uh, do I really wanna do that? I really wanna do that. I, just, I really wanna do that. It's a good car. He's been in cars with me when stupidest things have happened. I'm driving down the road and we hear all of a sudden just a loud bang. Looking at him, looking at me, and like, what in the world? Get out, look around, there's nothing there. No reason for this car to make any noise. Nothing on the road, nothing in my tire, nothing under my body. Oh, wait, never mind. That's a tire. How did that get there? 
That thing must have been grinding underneath my car for a while because it had been shredded, caught up in my oil pan. <laughs> and it's just commonplace for me. I'm just glad that he wasn't in the car when my old car exploded. I was on my way to work as that mechanic, going straight there, working with my father. Good times, bad times, whatever, you know, parents. My freaking car, as I'm pulling up, I hear a bang clunk, and I start hearing a shh, 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 shh. I'm driving along, I'm like, what in the world's that? Pull over and check what's going on. I see my muffler's gone. Just gone. No idea where. I'm like, okay, whatever, continue driving, get to work, go to find out what's going on. No, that doesn't happen. I go about another two blocks, and I hear bang, my whole car goes, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm shaking, and I am confused and scared. I'm like, what in the world just happened? I get out, I'm shimmering, I'm shaking, my adrenaline's running. I see my drive shaft on the ground. Oh, nice. <clears throat> Put three years in that car. I don't regret a moment, but dang, if I don't have the worst luck. All right, so this one, this one's a little bit more complex. You've got the idea. You definitely need to work on your punch-up. I want you to do this one in front of a mirror. It's actually jumping around. You, you started off with your friends, and you mentioned your car, and then you talked about your friends, and you went back to talk about your car. And then you told us that the car was in an accident, and then you described the car. It needs to be, talk about your friends, stick with your friends, explain us the car, destroy the car, because we need to make a connection with that car. All the pieces to a damn good set are there. Your order is just off because we need to get the connection that you already have with your car, with your luck. We need to feel that. And everything that you were doing up there, I could see where you were going with it, but again, you started with your friend, talked a little bit about the car, went back to your friend, totaled the car, and then got us to know what that car meant to you. We need to know what the car means to you before you shatter it. We need your friend to be together over here at the beginning of your set, and if you can do that, that's a solid set! Like, you have everything you need, you put some punch-up in there, you can make a type 5 out of that. Like, really, I think you can. That was kind of fun. I enjoyed the story. But if you can do that, practice that one in front of a mirror, but, by the way, as I advise to everyone, practicing is the only way you are ever going to learn how to do this. We have to do it in front of a mirror, We've told each other, and this is the worst, because you're not going to get a laugh doing it, but it does help for pacing. We've done each other skits to each other alone in a room. It sucks, but you will get the advice. For all of you, I really recommend that. You're going to get better at doing this. And we're going to be back here every year, so we hope to see some of the same faces doing some of the same sets. Polish them for next year, and let's see what we can come up with. What do you got? Justin, this is explaining when Alkali says punch up if you don't want that easy. It's adding in the laugh. It's getting the joke, and it's just general. Your timing's good on a lot of them. Yeah. Five minutes is rough. Oh yeah. Uh, getting a good tight five-minute set is rough. The reason you do a tight five is you know what happens if you're at an open mic at a club and you get to five four fifty, a yellow light comes on, and at five the red light comes on, and at five ten they turn your fucking mic off and the MC comes out and goes. Get off the fucking stage, man. Yeah. Um, the first laugh is the hardest one to get of any set. When you're doing polish and punch up, figure out what's getting that first laugh and build off it. It doesn't have to be laugh after laugh after laugh, but when the laughter's died down from the first one, do you build, then get another one. Laughter builds. If you can get that first laugh in there, you can build every laugh right up to the close. Absolutely. So. Well, we do apologize. We did run out of time for anyone else to go today. We will be back next year, like we said. And if you ever see any of us at a convention, myself, Boozy, usually Uncle Kage will try to do the same thing. We've always tried to put in for an open mic. This is a great place to polish what you're doing. I also suggest there's probably an open mic in your area. I do that all the time to test out new material. I have bombed at the Laugh Factory in Chicago more times than I can count because I'm practicing new shit. Bombing hurts, it's part of the job. One caveat, open mics in your area, great way 
to get your set together, to learn what works on an audience that maybe is not as forgiving as oh, furries. Yeah. Um, this is something I wish someone had told me when I started doing open mics. I'm sure you wish. Comedians are fucking vicious, man. Yes. Oh like they are more vicious than 14 year old high schoolers. If you bomb on stage at an open mic, there are comedians who will make it their mission to make you feel like shit to try to keep you from coming back. Because if you don't come back and there's a four hour open mic, guess what they get if they don't have enough comedians to fill that time? They get more fucking time on stage. So it is persistence. If you bomb, make a mental note. What's working, what's not working, practice it in front of the mirror, revise it. A lot of you came up here, you spoke right off the top of your head with things that maybe you've thought through a few times. We don't even fucking do that. If you watch us on stage, we'll walk out, we'll put a notebook on a table, or we'll put a phone on a table, or we'll be looking at a piece of paper on the floor. You know what that is? That's our set list. Yeah. That's five or six bits that we know backwards and forwards and the order that we have discovered from doing them that they work best in. Oh yeah. If you do a bit, it bombs. See if you can polish it, if there's some good things in it. If it just completely bombs, there's no laugh and there's no salvage in it, throw the fucking bit out. Yeah. Don't spend a lot of time trying to polish a turd. But if, uh, if there's good bones to an act, it's getting a laugh, it's getting a response. The fact that people aren't laughing the whole time just means you have to polish it and do it again. So don't get discouraged when you're doing open mics, especially in your local areas. Ladies and gentlemen, both and neither, give it up for Boozy Badger! for being here. Keep trying. Keep getting up on that stage. I think there's actually a variety show this weekend. Do everything you can to put yourself out there. It's the only way you're going to grow with this. Thank you very much. Enjoy the convention and good night! Silver Gato Man He bought me a coffee Silver Gato Man Here is the song for thee he likes to video all the panels at the cons You should go and watch them whether they are short or long Silver Gato Man, you video that's not a jibe All of you go to his YouTube channel and like and subscribe